Hello everybody. I decided to make a different kind of video and we are going to talk about my thoughts and I got my little notes right here. This isn't going to be a fancy thing with all the fancy stuff all over the screen. Uh, this is just going to be me telling you about my experience and my thoughts. This is just my opinion. Uh, but my thoughts, so my thoughts on a bus or a van conversion business after years of operation. So everything I kind of learned and figured out during that process, I want to share with you guys. So if anybody out there is considering starting a conversion company, you can have a little bit of this knowledge from somebody who did it. My backstory is I owned a school bus conversion company, Dream Reality Studios, LLC, and operated successfully and with profit for three years, right? Anybody can start a business, doesn't mean you're gonna make money, right? You could totally lose money easily doing a business. And I operated successfully for three years. So that's my background. And I'll attach links so you can kind of check out what I'm doing. And I recently kind of just took a break so I could focus on some other things, not because the business was bad. And I recently got some, some messages on Instagram asking me like business questions about the business. And I thought it'd be cool to sit down and kind of share my thoughts in a video where anybody who might be considering this could watch and learn from my experience after operation. My name is Isaac, by the way. Okay, so I just got like three key points here that we're gonna kind of go off of and go into whatever else we think of. But the biggest one is, uh, there's a few ways you can do a conversion company, right? You could build and sell, or you could build for clients. Now, my business model was building and selling, which means I would go buy the van, buy the bus, and then I would convert it and then I would sell it at the end of conversion. So I'll talk to you about the pros and cons of that and then we'll talk about building for clients. When you're building and selling what, for yourself, the, your, all of the expenses are on you, right? So I'm gonna go out and buy a $15,000 van or a $5,000 bus, I'm paying for that $5,000, I'm, I'm paying for that. And then the conversion, I'm paying for that. So that's thousands of dollars out the door already. And then you've got materials, you've got time. Let's just say when I was doing buses, I could do them in 30 days if I was crazy. I'd say a realistic bus build is probably three months. If you're working on it Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week. And so you've got three months where you're not making money at a job. You've got 20 to 30 to 40 thousand dollars. So you've spent all this money and you have all this time and you're not bringing in any money, right? So it's a big risk. Okay, so let's say you just worked for three months, you put 30 thousand dollars in whatever it is you just built. Now you got to list it. There's no guarantee that it is going to sell. So now that three months you built, and then the three months it's sitting on the market, that's six months, you're not bringing in any money, and your bills are still showing up. It's very risky, and that's why a lot of people don't use that business model. I did, and I'll tell you why. I had, or have, or I don't know what it is, a decent social media following, and typically, uh, so it's like my building process. So everything comes down to sales. My building process was promotion on the sale. So as I was building the bus, people are watching the bus. They're sharing the bus to their friends. They're sharing the bus to their friend that's looking for a bus. So the whole building process for me is uh, a way to, to basically promote the 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 conversion to sell it at the end. So 
I never had a problem selling the rigs because of my unique angle at it, right? If you were just gonna build and sell, I would not recommend going in full time or having a whole bunch of capital to kind of get you through it. Which brings me to clients. Now, lots, I'll talk about the pros with clients. Number one, you're not buying the rig. You're not mechanically, if anything happens to that rig mechanically, that's not on you. They bought the rig. So you, you don't, you're not spending the money on the, uh, on the vehicle. Typically, your client's paying for all the parts, so you're not paying. So all those expenses now are completely gone, right? And then you, we'll talk more about business-wise on the money part of how to deal with clients later. So make sure you watch the whole video so you don't miss something, but you have way less, way less financial risk. And now you've got money coming in. Typically, you would take a deposit anyways. Again, we'll get into most of that stuff later. I have done both. I've just never shared my client experiences, and maybe I will in this video. Financial risk is gone, pretty much. Here's, here's where it changes. Now, when here's where it sucks and why I quit doing client builds. Now, clients typically are hiring you because they don't know how to build. They don't want to build, they don't know how to build. So sometimes they're unrealistic because they don't know. They don't know how hard it is to cut that piece of plywood or get it around the wheel well perfectly or they don't know because they've never done it. So sometimes they have unrealistic expectations. That's one side of it. The other side of it is uh, it changes the game mentally, right? When you're building and selling, for me, it was more like an art project, right? I'm like, okay, I want to do the cabinets black this time. I want to try a bamboo countertop. I want to try a live edge countertop. It's more of a creative, artistic endeavor, right? When you're building for clients, now you have to paint the cabinet this color. You ha like, it, it's just, I don't know, the love part I think is gone for me, right? And then, uh, and then the other thing is you second guess everything, right? So it's like, if I'm building for myself, basically I have this thing to show at the end and they come look at it and if they like the build, they buy it. If they don't like the build, they don't buy it. Like nobody, there's no, you know what I'm saying? There's no love or hate thing going on there, right? They come look at my work, they accept it or not, and they pay me or not. It's that simple. When you're doing a client job, it could get tricky quickly, right? They might not like the way you did this. They might not like the way you did that. Now they're getting on the internet, talking about how you put this window in wrong, or the cock line isn't perfect. So you, every little move you make during the build, you second guess and question. I remember one of the client builds I did, everything I did, I questioned, and it was just a mental trip, and I said I would never do it again. But financial risk is gone by dealing with the mental differences, if that makes sense. So that's the difference between building and selling, build and sell or client jobs. Those are the big differences. Part two. <laughs> So that was part one. I've got three key points here. Part two is completely custom builds or a platform. So this doesn't really matter as far as clients are building and selling. Basically what I'm saying here is, are you doing a different rig every time? Or are you hypothetically doing the exact same thing, right? So I had a bus conversion company and I pretty much, my specialty was 7.3 short buses. I could do a whole video on why that's probably the only school bus I would ever buy again, and the only one I recommend you buy. Uh, but anyways, 
I tried very hard to keep them the same, but the thing about buses is they're all different, right? There's four windows, there's five windows, there's different body makers, Bluebird, Colin, anyways, I'm not gonna get into a bus thing, but they're all different. So it was like, I was doing custom stuff and it was different every single time to an extent, right? There are certain things that I carried over into every bus build, the thing about a custom thing is you got to figure it out every single time. So you might not know about this. You might not know about that. You might need to figure this out. That slows you down big time. Now I was building and selling so I could afford those kinds of things. I see a huge benefit to hypothetically, you'll see these conversion companies that will just do sprinter vans or they will just do ProMasters, or they will just do Ford Transits. Now, the cool thing about that is like, for example, Sprinter Vans has the exact same body from 2007 to like 2007, don't quote me, 2017, something. Huge span where if I did a Sprinter 144, they're all exactly the same. So what that means is if I built out a, a layout in a van, I could literally write down every single dimension send it to a CNC guy, and then every time a new van comes in or I get a new van, I just press a button and everything's pre-cut and I just, it cuts the build time down so much and you learn the platform. I mean, it's the way to go. Excuse me, to be honest, I like buses, still love buses. And that's why I chose to do things that aren't necessarily business-wise the better move to do because I just want to do these things. Um, but if I was gonna be doing a business to make money, I would specialize in a platform. I would pick a platform, something that you could learn, something that you could figure out, and then you, because for me, when I was doing buses, one of the biggest things I had going for me was I didn't have to figure anything out, really. It's like, yeah, the bus curve is different on the roof, but I've done it so many times, it doesn't matter, I'll just trace it out. At the end of my bus conversion company days, I never had to think about anything. I needed to put a bed frame in. I already knew the materials I needed to buy. I already know how many screws it took. I knew it would take me two hours maybe to put a bed frame. So it's like where you're going to lose your time is figuring things out and learning, right? So pick a platform that you can stick with if, if you're going to try and do this thing long term. Part three. Yeah, make sure you're sticking around for this, this whole deal here so you don't, you don't miss a nugget, especially if you're considering doing... This is probably one of the biggest things. Uh, so part three is our billing. If you're built, doing a client job, are you billing hourly or by the job? Now, I will say this. I have seen a lot of conversion companies go bankrupt. I've seen a lot of conversion companies not make it. And I have seen a lot of self-employed business people not make it. It's very, very hard to be self-employed. Uh, gosh, I could do a whole video on that, but that's not what this one is. Uh, I might not be the best builder in the world, but I'm probably better at business than most builders, which is why I operated successfully and most of them failed. And we can talk about that. I don't know how much we'll get into that, but now hourly, let's talk about hourly. <clears throat> I am not a fan of hourly. Let's talk about why. If you're billing hourly, all you've done is created a job, right? You've just created a job where you're working hourly. Now, you know, you, you could drag the thing out forever and, you know, make your money or whatever, but you've just created a job, right? And now you have all this risk of cutting holes all over this person's van. You're going to have to have some type of insurance or, or and that's a whole other thing, but... It's like you're taking on all this risk to bill hourly. 
um, now you're self-employed. Now you got to pay self pay self-employed tax. Like it doesn't make sense. If I'm going to work hourly, I'd rather go get a W two working somewhere else. So at the end of the year, I could go walk into H and R Block, hand him a W two, and walk out stress free, right? Because the other thing is, when you're operating your own business, you have books. You have to keep track of every screw you buy. You have to keep track. Of, it ain't worth it for hourly, in my opinion. You're just creating a job and then accepting all this extra risk, all these extra responsibilities, all these extra expenses. You're making less money. I'd almost bet you money. Uh, so the people I see doing it hourly, they're not, they're not business minded, right? I personally believe in billing by the job. <clears throat> so hypothetically, uh, somebody brings me a Sprinter van and and I'm just giving rough numbers. This isn't the real numbers. They want me to build it out, right? If it's $15,000 in materials, I'm gonna charge them 15 grand just for my time and putting it together, right? Uh, I, I bet you that's a lot more than what you would've got hourly. So that's a $30,000, which is cheap, I'm just saying. And now, because in the benefits for you and the client is now you're not milking the time clock for those paychecks, right? You're going to get your, so in the way I would do this, I guess I'll touch on this a little bit, is I would be like, okay, it's $30,000. I want $15,000 up front to tell me you're serious. I'd take their money, buy everything for the van, and then I'm not coming out of pocket on any of the expenses. And then the sooner that I can get the thing done, they're gonna be happier, they get their van back, but the sooner I get my paycheck. And also, as far as the building and selling part relating to this, now, I'm, as soon as the build's done, I would typically list and then sell, and that could take forever or never, it can never sell. Risk, gambling, right? That's what business is. But now, as soon as the van is done, the customer's stoked, they come get their van, and I get my paycheck. Everybody wins. They get their van soon, nobody's milking. That's how I would run that type of business if it was me. Now, I recently have been studying the van business a lot the last few weeks. And I was a bus builder doing custom things, building and selling, nothing like the van conversion world is doing. And one of the things I noticed that I think is very, very smart that I see van people doing is uh, a company will specialize in a platform, a Sprinter van, right? They'll build out a layout, they'll call it whatever, right? And then what they do is they They've done it before, so they'll have, you know, photos and stuff on their website, and you could buy the layout, right? So you already own, or you go buy a Sprinter van from year to year, <clears throat> whatever. And let's just say, like I said, the layout's thirty grand, right? Same thing. So it's like you already know what you're getting, and and the nice thing of, from the building side of this is. I already know how to do it. I already know how to put it in and we're not figuring it out with unrealistic expectations from the client, right? They know they're gonna get a bed here, they're gonna get a chair here and this. The only options they're really gonna have is maybe the color of the cabinets if you give them that much. And they get a brand new bill. Uh, I think the van, the van conversion game business-wise has it way more figured out than bus builders. <laughs> I don't even want to get started on bus builders. But anyways, so just to recap, <clears throat> those are my thoughts on a bus and van conversion business after years of successful operation. These are just some things that I have learned, things I'm learning now as I study a different industry. And uh, I just wanted to share them with you guys in case there's somebody out there considering doing this. This isn't just some, I'm not just some guy who's talking about it in theory, like I owned a business for lots of years <clears throat> and made money doing it. So these are my thoughts. I, I might do these types of videos more often. I don't know, it depends on how this goes. So if you guys like this video and you wanna see more of them, make sure to let me know in the comment section. 
hit the thumbs up. And if there's anything, you know, I'd, I'd love to get some feedback from you guys. Am I wrong on certain things? Is there anything I'm missing? Or is there a type of video more in depth you would like me to make kind of about this subject? Uh, let me know. So my name's Isaac, I'm signing out. This isn't a fancy video, it's just knowledge. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another one. Bye.